Have you been accused of a child sex crime in Texas? Hi, I'm Jeff Hampton with the Fulgham Law Firm. And I wanna welcome you to our YouTube channel today. And I wanna to talk to you today about a subject that's very difficult to get into, but I can tell you this, if you are innocent of the charges of a child sex crime in Texas, you are facing a very serious charge that you need uh, the help of an experienced criminal defense attorney. And that help starts with understanding what Texas law says about the crime. And listen, if you wait around to the end of this video, I'll also provide you a free ebook, what to do if you've been charged with a crime in Texas. Now, listen, getting arrested and charged with a child sex crime in Texas can be a nightmare for you and many of those that, that maybe are close to you because of how they are affected by this. The consequences of conviction in Texas for this type of charge are, are extremely harsh. You could be locked behind bars for life. It ruins mo many people's careers. It could, you it could end up having to register as a sex offender. Friends and family begin to doubt and disassociate from you. This is, I mean, I'm just being upfront with you in this situation. It's important to know that people that have been wrongfully charged for this, you're in for the fight of your life. And so let's talk for a few moments about some of the charges that Texas sex crimes um, are identified here as it relates to children. What about the crime of sexual assault of a child? The crime of sexual assault of a child means penetration of a child's sexual organ by any means um, and as in doing so or causing the child's mouth or sex organs to come in contact with the mouth or sex organs of an adult. Okay, Texas sexual assault law considers a child to be under the age of 17. The prosecutor does not need to show that you knew the age of the child. There's also no requirement that you personally make contact with the child since sexual assault can include causing another person to commit the act as well. Now that's kind of a rare situation, but uh, the prosecutor must at least show, however, that you knew about committing the act and intended to do so. Now, what if, what if there was contact? What if there wasn't sex that took place, but what if there was contact that took place, but there was no sexual intent? We're going to talk about that. There are valid defenses to this, but I think it's important that you understand many times the way that these type of crimes start out is based upon just an allegation alone. Many times there is no other evidence. There is nothing else to establish other than the word of some, uh, the word of a child. And many times there can be what's called a delay outcry, which can be years later where someone makes a statement saying, this person did something to me. And now it just becomes the word of an individual versus your word. Okay. So in, in Texas and to under Texas law, sexual assault is normally construed or normally classified as a second degree felony punishable by a minimum of two up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. However, if sexual activity took place and it was a, a, a alleged as sexual assault of a child, particularly if it was aggravated, it would be classified as a first degree felony punishable by a minimum of five years up to life in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. So, Let's talk about what type of prohibited sexual conduct there is under Texas law. In many, Texas normally categorizes whether sexual conduct is illegal or not based on who is involved. So it mainly applies, the Texas laws on this apply mainly to family members and includes incidents of sexual intercourse um, or deviant sexual intercourse, but particularly, and I'm not just talking about incest and all these other examples that we all know to be illegal, but if a child is involved, it's never okay unless, and one of the only examples of that is if, you, if the child is married, if they, the spouse of the child is permitted to have sexual intercourse with the child, if there's what's called, the, some people call it the Romeo and Juliet law, where let's say a 15-year-old has sex with a 17-year-old. Well, in that situation, as long as they are no more than three years apart from one another, that is a valid defense as well under Texas law. And it, it, but those are, those are rare. For the most part, if, you, if anyone has any sexual activity with a child or contact with a child, it's illegal. Now let's talk for a few moments about online solicitation of a minor. Another example of a Texas uh, child sex crime. The, 
many of you have maybe seen that show, How to Catch a Predator, you know that uh, what online solicitation of a minor is. It's unlawful in Texas as well as everywhere else in the country. It means using your computer or your phone to communicate uh, with a minor in a sexually explicit fashion by sending or texting explicit materials to a minor or, as it says, to solicit sexual activity to meet up and complete the act of sexual intercourse, okay? Now, this law applies to minors who are under the age of 17. However, it can also include someone who you believe is under the age of 17. Some people say, no, I was just part of a sting operation. The person behind the computer wasn't really a minor. Well, in this situation, the law says as long as you believed them to be under the age of 17, which means that's critical, you have to know that they were a child based upon the communication that takes place. And that is a valid defense to the crime of online solicitation of a minor. So uh, it's punishable. Online solicitation of a minor is punishable as either a second or a third degree felony. If the minor is under the age of 14 or you believed them to be under the age of 14, that it is considered a second degree felony punishable by a minimum of two up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. And it is a second degree felony if you solicit uh, the, fel the minor for sex. Now, if you're, let me just say this. Let, what if we move past the solicitation aspect of it? And now what if we're talking about the actual crime of possession of, ch of child pornography? So you're talking about the internet. One is to solicit Someone, someone believes to be a child, what if it's now looking at pornography involving children? Well, it is illegal under Texas law to view material of a child who is under the age, uh, a child under the age of 17, under the age of 18, and who is engaging in sexual conduct when the material is made. Visual material can include what? Photos, videos, whether it be in physical or digital form. And here's the thing. It applies to those who knowingly or intentionally possess it. So you have to know what you're looking at, okay? So that many times one of the defenses is there's all this type of pornography that's out there that's right on the edge of what it is. This has to be very clear that this is, uh, you're talking about minors involved in order to be charged with this crime. So... Generally, child pornography is considered a third-degree felony punishable by a minimum of two up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. However, if it is proven that you, in, you possessed it with the intent to distribute those, th that pornography or to, uh, to profit from that pornography, it can actually be raised up to a second-degree felony punishable by a minimum of two up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. We've represented people before who had it on their computer, but multiple other people had access to the computer and they had done nothing wrong. And of course, in that situation, they're wanting to establish, they're wanting to establish, I didn't do it. I didn't even know it was on the computer. So it's really important. The state of Texas must prove that criminal element of intent as it relates to possession. Okay, possession of child pornography. They have to show that you exercised care, custody, or control over that prohibited material. All right. Now, finally, there's many other ones, but I want to cover the main point here, which is indecency with a child. It is illegal to engage in, in indecency with a child under the age of 17, whether you knew the child's age or not. This means engaging in sexual contact with the child or causing the child to engage in sexual contact with another person. Specifically, you engage in sexual contact, and this is key, by touching the child's body, including their genitals, regardless of whether it is through their clothing. You can also commit this act if you expose someone, uh, it, your genitals, or with the intent and knowledge that a child is present. Okay, that's key. We've represented people where they were exposed but did not know that the child was present. Once again, that is a, a critical element that has to be proven here. Now, to be found guilty of this offense, the prosecutor must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that your criminal intent was to arouse, and this is critical, to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of any person committing the act. So what if you touched a child inappropriately, but there was no intent of arousal or gratifying the sexual desire of anyone, including yourself? Your intent makes a big difference as to whether or not the prosecutor is going to be able to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. Finally, I, I want to cover 
When we talk about indecency with a child, let me tell you very quickly, it can be cl classified as either a second or third degree felony. If it is a second degree felony, it would be two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. And if you engage in sexual contact with the child or cause the child to engage in, in that contact, but it would be a third degree felony if you merely expose. So there's indecency by contact and then there is indecency by exposure. The exposure element of indecency is a lower charge of a third degree felony punishable by a minimum of two, up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Finally, continuous sexual abuse of a child. In this situation, if there was an act of sexual abuse and, that, and it took place more than once over a period of time, the law says if you commit two or more acts of sexual abuse in 30 or more days in duration and you are 17 or older and the child is under the age of 14, then you can be charged with the crime of continuous sexual abuse of a child. And so in that situation, it is one of the more serious crimes that you can be charged with. In fact, this crime is more serious than a murder charge. The range of punishment on a continuous sexual abuse of a child case is a minimum of 25 years in prison up to life in prison and, and a $10,000 fine. Now, why does all this matter? Because listen, it's, it's critically important. If you are innocent of these charges, if you or a loved one has done nothing wrong, here's what you need to do. You need to contact an experienced criminal defense attorney we have a team of former prosecutors, um, and, and we have handled many cases just like this. If you are innocent, particularly if you have evidence that would help establish the fact that you did not do anything wrong in this, your attorney needs to make a grand jury presentation to see about trying to either minimize this charge or to see if it can be no build, which is the equivalent of having it thrown out. But time is of the essence. So I encourage you, if you would like a free case consultation and you're in the North Texas area, give us a call. I promised you that free ebook. If you click below, I'll send you over what to do if you've been charged with a crime in Texas. I want to thank you for joining us today talking about a difficult subject. But if you're innocent, there's nothing more important than getting on top of your case. Thank you again for joining us today. We'll see you on our next YouTube channel.